Hello everyone, I'm sitting here working through a couple of radios here on the bench. Uh, got this Halocrafters S38 and one of these beautiful uh, SBE SB-36 um, amateur transceivers. And one of the questions I get a lot of times, um, not only through email, but on the uh, YouTube chat screen, is folks are always asking, what am I using to clean controls and switches and so forth? Well, now, I've seen, uh, I don't know, it's probably two dozen of them in the last month has asked this, but... You know, I've seen people use all kinds of different things. You know, in one video I showed how to use uh, the salt and vinegar solution to clean ceramic um, parts and this and that. But uh, something I saw someone do that I would not recommend is using WD-40 to clean anything that has a phenolic wafer in it like this band switch you know uses a phenolic type of uh, wafer switch and the reason for that is WD-40 will soak into this uh, phenolic wafer and will actually deteriorate it and make it become brittle and break apart now you know there's a lot of different uh, cleaners on the market and you know I use a lot of them myself but there is one cleaner that I like using the most for um, restoring old radios and that is deoxid like this is the D5 series it does a real good job it doesn't attack the phenolic it's bad also, but remember you know even using this be careful on uh, these phenolic wafers now even on some of these switches you notice it has a phenolic uh, insert on the back of them just you know be careful on the mount <clears throat> now a few folks has complained about uh, the oxid uh, d5 being like a pressure washer and uh, <laughs> there is a thought process from the engineering that designed this and it is to wash out the switches when you insert the straw in you spray it it's going to wash all those contaminants out of the switch um they come up with this little adapter to uh, put on here with a little straw on it that reduces the amount i would rather for them to go back to the old style where you had just a small straw and um, you know it keeps from getting so much chemical in one place but you know it is what it is it's good stuff it works real well when I'm doing these uh, phenolic type of uh, boards what I use the uh, most is the Oxid D100 L series some people call it the red transmission fluid and what's the good about it? it has a needle tip on it so you can get down here and put this exactly where you need it and work the switch back and forth instead of getting it all over the whole complete you know <laughs> switch assembly um, these little switches up here you know all or phenolic which is a pretty thick and you can get right down there and drop it right on the contact and uh, work the switch back and forth it will do the job if uh, you're working on uh, audio equipment or radios or whatever it is um, boat trailer connectors on the back of your your truck the is good stuff to use to uh, clean those with and, you know something that a lot of people don't think about uh, you know is your off-road vehicles uh, four-wheelers um, side by sides, uh, boats. You know, if you got radio equipment on these uh, these vehicles, <clears throat> especially on boats and marine 
stuff, you know, antenna connectors like this SO239 or your PL259, your power cables, they'll get corroded, especially from uh, the salt air, you know. Little drop of this uh, D100L onto the threads, and a little drop right here in the center of the, uh, the center post, you know, put your coax in it, screw it up, unscrew it a couple of times and get it good and lubricated you won't have to worry about those connectors getting corroded it's great stuff to use um, automotive under the hood you're making connections in the hood to the battery little DL100 to help keep things um, you know shiny and bright and keep it from uh, corroding as bad and back to the radio, you know, you got lots of things in here that need to be cleaned and lubricated. One of them is tube sockets, you know. I used to uh, just take a uh, pipe cleaner and wet it with some contact cleaner and uh, run it in and down the, uh, the tube pin. It does okay. It doesn't really get down there and brush the little pins out as good. Now, if you'll get the uh, deoxid emergency survival kit or any of the other products that has this in it it actually comes with uh, some little brushes some little lot nylon brushes these do real good you put a little bit of uh, D100L on it and you can get in there and you can uh, really brush those pins out real good and you don't have to keep applying a lot to it because it stays pretty wet with it as you can probably see uh, you can tell the holes that I've done because you know it's a little wet around the uh, base material there but this works real good for getting in there and cleaning out those uh, two pin holes now for 9 pin tools I used to uh, <clears throat> take a bit of stainless steel and wrap cotton thread around it and super glue it on each end you know and spray contact cleaner and get in there in the little small holes and clean them but uh, Keg Laboratories has also come up with these toothpicks that has a uh, little fiber wipe on the end of it it's real good to get in there and uh, you know put some D1 hundred on it getting them little pins and uh, clean them out real good these works real great um, I suggest anybody picking up some of these especially for those little nine pin tubes and stuff because this will really get in there and clean those uh, two pins out you know again you know like on this SB36 you got a lot of wafer switches in here to clean if you're just taking contact cleaner and blasting everything you know you're getting that stuff everywhere and these little wafers are going to soak it up something I like to do is take something like this old peel bottle and I'll spray some of this deoxid in here doesn't take much you can take one of these little red straws stick it down in there Put your finger over the top of it and pick it up and you now have a straw full of deoxid. You can get right in here to the little contacts that you need to clean. Take your finger off. It's going to put a little drop on each one. And rotate that switch back and forth. This way you're not getting the stuff all over the place. You're only getting exactly where you need it at. I mean, good luck, you know. <laughs> if one of these switches is a swell up and crack, you know, good luck trying to find one for a radio of this vintage. When you're looking at, you know, these old radios, you got a number of these variable capacitors also need to be clean, cleaned and lubricated. You know, here we have a rotor that turns, and this rotor is grounded by design. Your stator that's inside is actually, is what's isolated. And you need to make sure you clean those too. Again, the DL100, just a little shot, uh, drop 
on the shafts work those back and forth get that stuff down in there and it will clean it and shine it right up and make a great electrical connection that's real good for drifty PFOs you know just making sure that that stator I mean that rotator is still getting this good ground and you know you can't forget about your two pins and what I like to use on my two pins is uh, the deoxid in the little pencil applicator very simple just take it and go all the way on the two pins and just let that sit on there for a while and soak and then reinstall your tube and that'll keep them two pins good and clean and keep other uh, oxidation from happening so guys uh, Keg Laboratory is not paying me or uh, instructing me on what to say anything about their products um, it's just that this is what I use and I use them because it works and it's good stuff <clears throat> if you're working on any type of boat anchor equipment or anything that's used outside that has electrical connections it's really hard to beat deoxid and it's just it's good stuff cost a little more than what your normal um, cleaners cost but in the long run you will appreciate the outcome of using these and like I say the only reason I'm doing this because so many of you had asked me what is that stuff you're spraying in the radio well this is most nine times out of ten when you see me spraying something it is deoxid now in my hand I have a control here that uh, I've been taking out and I pry the tabs up on it and we're going to take it apart and have a look at it and uh, We'll see what it looks like before we clean it. So uh, let's go ahead and pull it apart here. Well, I think you can see, be able to see uh, just how dirty this control is you know we got a lot of char and you can see the uh, resistant material is, is very dirty now I'm gonna put this back together and we're gonna spray it out with the D5 and then we'll take it back apart and look at it again okay I got the two tabs pushed back down we'll just take some uh, D5 and come right here through the uh, holes here in the back Give this a good washing. Rotate it around. Turn it over. That way the chemical runs out. Give it another blast. Just to make sure it all gets out of there. We'll open this back up and have a look at it. And you can always see how much cleaner it is now everything is still wet it will dry shortly but you can see all that black looking soot that was on here it's uh, pretty much gone and uh, the little black residue of soot that was around the uh, rotator part is uh, pretty gone and the uh, contacts oh, 
nice and shiny and you know that's that's why it helps to have that pressure from that nozzle to go ahead and wash that old stuff out so it's not still just sitting inside the switch so that does help a lot so those that you know you that like to get some uh, deoxid by CAG's laboratory I'll put this same information here down in the show more tab just under this video you can follow these links and find these products that I've used also for a limited time CAG Laboratories has given me this promo code of CVID-20 for a 20 cent discount at the, the CAG Labs website so if you'd like to get some of these at a cheaper price Here's your opportunity to do it. So guys, I hope these little tips help. Um, like I say, so many asked, and that's the only reason I wanted to do this video. Now i got so much to get to. Uh, like I say, two bit radios here on the benches that we'll be going through. I'll be explaining why this is known as the killer receiver. And that doesn't mean that it's being such a great radio is literally the word killer so <laughs> stay tuned a lot more to come we got a lot to go through um, more time is coming to be able to get out here in the shop to get some of this stuff done and we'll see you in the next video bye now